In this video, I will be walking you through a mini Python project where we will create an alarm clock slash timer. Now, this will be fairly straightforward, but I will show you how to play sound through Python and how you can do a fancy thing with the terminal, which involves clearing what you've already printed and then printing something over top of it. So you kind of get a live countdown timer, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, etc. Uh, and it looks a little bit better than printing out like a ton of lines of code probably something that's interesting and that you guys have not seen before. Regardless, that's what we're going to build. If you are interested in getting better at Python and becoming a software engineer, check out my course programmingexpert.io. There'll be a link in the description. It has hundreds of practice questions, all kinds of projects, hours upon hours of lectures and videos. I know you guys can get a ton of value from that. Last thing, I do have a blockchain and Web3 course as well. It's called Blockchain Expert. If you're interested in that space, then check that out from the link in the description. And with that said, let's get into the project. All right, so just to give you a super quick brief here on what we're going to be doing. Essentially, we're going to ask the user to input some kind of time, you know, five minutes, six minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it is. We're then going to give them a live kind of countdown timer. And then as soon as that timer or alarm goes off, we're going to play a sound. Now, that means the first thing we need here is some kind of sound effect so that we can actually play that when the alarm goes off. So to get a sound effect, you can just download one on your own. You can pick one that's on your computer and just drag it into the same directory as where your Python script is. So in my case, I have a folder open on my desktop and inside the folder, I have my alarmclock.py file and then alarm.mp3, which is a sound effect I downloaded from this link, which I will leave in the description. So whatever sound effect you want, just make sure it's in the same directory as the file uh, that you're writing your Python code in. OK, next we need to install a module which is going to allow us to play this sound effect. So I'm going to open up my terminal here or command prompt, whatever you want to refer to it as. I'm going to type the command pip install play sound. So this is the name of the library module that we're going to be using to play the sound. OK, pip install play sound. I already have it installed. If for some reason that doesn't work for you, you can try pip3 install play sound. If that doesn't work, try python hyphen m pip install play sound. And if that doesn't work, try python3 hyphen m pip install. If none of those work, I will leave two videos on the screen that show you how to fix this pip command. Okay, at this point, I'm going to assume you have play sound installed. And what we can do now is import this module. So we're actually going to go to the top of our program and we're going to say, from play sound, import play sound. Now, this here is a function that we can use uh, to play a sound. So we can simply say play sound. We put the name of our sound, which in this case is alarm.mp3. Notice it matches the file name here. And since it's in the same directory, all I need to know is the name of the file. And then if I run my code, it will start playing this sound. This one is pretty aggressive. It's also fairly loud. Hopefully, it's not going to annoy you guys too bad, but that is how you play sound very very easy okay next i'm going to import a module here called time we're going to use time uh, to kind of regulate the time so we have you know one second for each iteration as we're doing this countdown clock perfect we're then going to make a function so we're going to say define alarm this is going to take in a number of seconds and this is how long until we will play that kind of alarm sound effect okay the first thing we're going to do inside of our function here is we're going to say time elapsed is equal to zero. We're going to need a variable to keep track of, well, how much time has elapsed. And then we're going to have a while loop and we're going to say, well, the time elapsed is less than our seconds. We're going to do whatever is inside of here. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is say time dot sleep one. Now, this means wait for one second. Very straightforward. Just pause the code right here wait for a second and then continue. Obviously, we need to do that because if we don't have this kind of regulation of time, then the alarm is just going to go as fast as it possibly can, as fast as your computer can run it. And well, we're not actually going to be waiting 20 seconds, 30 seconds, etc. OK, next we're going to say time underscore elapsed plus equals one. OK, and now we want to figure out uh, how many minutes are remaining and how many seconds are remaining and then print that out to the screen. So you can do this in whatever kind of format or order that you want. But in my case, I'm just going to take the number of seconds. I'm going to figure out how many minutes are in that and how many seconds are in that and then print that out. If you want us to do hours, you know, weeks, days, months, etc., feel free to go ham and do that. In my case, I'm just going to do minutes and seconds. So first, I'm going to say time left 
is equal to the seconds minus the time elapsed because seconds is how many seconds we want to run this for time elapsed as well how much time has elapsed so we subtract those and that is how much time is remaining then we're going to figure out the number of not hours the number of minutes so we're going to say minutes left is equal to the time left integer divided by 60. integer division is two forward slashes and that's going to give you the integer component of division so for example if we had 125 seconds like this and we integer divide this by 60 then we're going to get two because 60 evenly divides 125 two times all right very good next we're going to say seconds underscore left is equal to the time left and then this is going to be modulus 60. now the way the mod operator works which is the percent sign here is it gives you the remainder after division so again same example we have 125 seconds if we do the mod operator here by 60 that is going to give us five because 60 goes into 125 two times sorry so that uses 120 seconds and then we have a remainder of five okay so that gives us the minutes and seconds left now we can print those out so we're going to say print we're going to use an f string available in python 3.6 and above so you do f either lowercase or uppercase doesn't matter you do a string and then inside of the string you can use curly braces and inside of the curly braces you can just put a variable so i can do minutes colon and then seconds and now it's going to print however many minutes colon however many seconds are left great lastly we can go here and we can call the alarm function and let's just test this out with say 10 seconds to see if everything's working before we go a little bit uh, further and kind of make things look prettier all right so let's run this here run the code and notice that we will get an issue name minutes is not defined okay that's because i need to put minutes left and seconds left so let's quickly fix that bug and then rerun okay nine eight seven six five etc just going to count all the way down however notice that this looks a little bit weird right we don't want to have like zero 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 one instead we'd want to have something like zero 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 one that's what we're used to seeing right or you know 20 minutes and five seconds we want it to be formatted like this so how do we fix that well there's actually a fancy thing we can do in python to automatically format our numbers we can go to our variable here which is a number we can put a colon directly after it and then we can put zero two d and this stands for make this two digits and pad it with a zero. So if it's already two digits, fine, we leave it the same. But if it's only one digit, we add a leading zero. That's what this is going to do. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that on seconds left as well. And now just to quickly show you, if I run the code here, notice that we now get our formatting with our leading zeros. Perfect. All right. So now that we've handled our formatting, the next thing we need to do is kind of clear the terminal and make it so everything is on the same line and it looks like it's constantly updating kind of the same countdown timer. So to do this, we're going to use two sequences of characters, which are known as ANSI characters or like commands or escape sequences, whatever you want to refer to them as. Essentially, these are invisible characters that when printed to the terminal will manipulate the terminal. In our case, it's going to clear something or delete something, but it could change the color of something. It could make something bold, underline, italicize. There's all kinds of styles and interesting sequences and characters you can print that manipulate the terminal. So I'm just going to show you two of them here related to clearing. But if you want to look at more of them, feel free to look them up. You're looking at ANSI. I guess it's characters or escape sequences. So we need two of them. The first one we're going to have is clear, and this is just going to clear the entire terminal screen so that it's empty. We don't see anything else. Now to do this, we're going to do backslash zero three three. Then this is going to be a square bracket, then two and the capital letter J. The next sequence we want is going to be clear and return. And this works a little bit differently, but this is going to return the character to or sorry, return the cursor to the home position so that when we print again, it's going to print over whatever was currently there, whatever was there before. So now this sequence is 033 square bracket and then H. OK, so what we're going to do is start by just clearing the entire terminal, right? Once we clear the entire terminal, then we're going to print out this. And then the next time we print it, we're going to clear return to the home position and kind of print over it. I know it seems a bit strange, but let's start by just looking at one of them. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say print clear and we'll just do clear. Okay, the first one. So now notice when I run my code, 
that it clears the terminal and then it starts printing stuff out. So that's fine, but it's printing everything on a new line, which we don't want. So what I can do is stop this. And now if I use my other sequence, I'm going to go here in my F string and I'm going to print clear and return before I print all of this. And now watch what happens. OK, nine, eight, seven. And look, it's on the same line and it's just updating the value. OK, so we cleared the entire terminal that we cleared and returned to that home position and kind of printed over what we had before. So hopefully that is making a little bit of sense. I know it's kind of weird how these uh, escape characters function, but now we have like a decent timer being updated on the screen. So now the last thing we need to do is once our alarm is finished or the timer is up, we need to play the sound. So we're going to say play sound and then this is going to be alarm dot MP3. And we need to ask the user how many minutes and how many seconds they want to set the alarm for. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say minutes is equal to input. How many minutes to wait or whatever you want to say here? OK, now I'm just going to convert this directly into an integer. I'm going to assume that they give me a valid int. If they don't, that's going to crash the program. But again, we're just going to assume that's fine. Then we're going to say seconds is equal to int input. How many seconds to wait like this? And now what we can do is we can say total underscore seconds is equal to minutes multiplied by 60 plus the number of seconds that they said. And then we can pass here total underscore seconds. And if we want to make this a little bit nicer, we can have some text here that says alarm will sound in and then the minutes and the seconds remaining. OK, so we're clearing and then we're going to print the alarm will sound in and then it will update whatever this value is and keep going downwards. OK, so that is pretty much our entire program. Let's try this out here. Okay, so we're going to run how many minutes to wait. Let's wait zero minutes and how many seconds. Let's wait 12 seconds. OK, alarm will sound at 11, 10, 9, 8 goes on. And then hopefully we should hear the sound. OK, so let's give this a second two, one. And for some reason, I'm not hearing the sound. OK. Ah, the reason I'm not hearing the sound is because my speakers are off, but I think you guys probably heard it in the recording because of the way that I have things set up. And there you go. Everything functions. It plays the sound and we are good. All right. So I think with that said, that's going to wrap up this video. That's all I had to show you for this Python alarm clock. Hopefully you got some value from this. You learned a little bit about these escape sequences, how to play sound, etc. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.